could be considered lucky, but unfortunate too. After graduating from university, I got hired as a website engineer for a mid-sized company. I was lucky that I got a job through my internship with this company, so I didn't have time didn't have to spend much time searching. This wasn't the job I originally wanted, though, as I wanted to be a game designer. However, the company offered a decent salary to fresh graduates and provided overtime pay. Thus, I was able to take care of all the household expenses. I decided to settle for this. I don't have any extra energy to consider other options. Frank. Do you know? Yes. Are you getting off work soon? Mm, progress is going quite well. I'm just wrapping up. I have some bad news. Do you think you can finish this project in five days? The client wants this sooner. That's so sudden. It shouldn't be a problem, though. Alright, I'm counting on you. Alright. Half a year. It had been half a year since I entered this company. Once I finished my prohibitionary period, I was given my own projects. At times, I was so busy that I couldn't even breathe. Eventually, I overcame those obstacles. Not long after, every project I received was a solo project. That's how much my company trusts in me. However, it looks like I'll have to work overtime again. For that. I rode my second-hand motorbike and arrived at a street near the office. It was one of those simple night markets that served street food to the locals. The street wasn't long, but had a little of everything. Kanji. Kanji. There it is. I have some boiled vegetables and tofu put. Tofu pudding. Perfect. We still have some pears in the fridge. I hopped on my bike and rode home after buying dinner for two. I recall the medical test results. The numbers were all a bit higher than the normal. The doctor says that despite her age, her condition is still acceptable. However, her blood sugar levels were unusually high. That's why she began to have medical treatment. Grandma told me it was only genetics and not to worry too much. For the next two and a half years, though, there, was, there were obvious changes to Grandma's health. She became tired easily had less appetite, couldn't put on walk properly, and slept way more. To make things easier, I started to cook meals. However, there were exceptions, like when I had to work overtime, then I'd buy some light meals before heading home. To make sure that Grandma was taking good care of her body, I had to watch her dietary intake. Grandma, I'm home! The moment I entered, Grandma was sitting on the couch as usual. She was watching her favorite TV drama, like always. Oh, my sweet granddaughter, you're home. Are you hungry? Grandma is really hungry. 
I'm sorry. Lots of people were waiting in line. I'm coming over. I sat beside Grandma and put the food on the table in front of her. Here, this is the kanji you wanted, and some side dishes. Here are some boiled vegetables. Make sure you finish them. I bought some low sugar tofu pudding too. What a face. I can't possibly finish this. Just eat slowly. It's alright if you can't finish everything. Just leave it. I also bought your favorite red bean buns. Have one if you feel hungry after dinner. Grandma touched my hand and then patted my head. If you keep giving me this much every day, I'll get fat. It's better to be fat. <laughs> I took out an envelope and handed it to Grandma. It contained a portion of my salary. It's for this month. That much? Not that much. I saved some for myself. You can go out and buy something to eat when I'm at work. Or you can order delivery. If you don't know how, just call me and I'll order for you. Also, take care if you go out. I know, I know. You're even better than me at lecturing now. Mm, that's good. My granddaughter. Hmm? Do you have a boyfriend yet? I didn't catch that. Oh, you cut off? Yeah, probably. All right. All right. <laughs> Why are you suddenly asking? Look, they're getting married. I looked at the TV in front of us. Indeed, they were. The drama was showing a wedding scene of the main couple getting married. No, not yet. Are there any boys you like? A dark memory suddenly entered my mind. There was a boy I liked in middle school. He was a year older. There was no special reason. He just looked handsome. However, I was unfashionable, girl. No one paid any attention to me. I wasn't very mature back then, either, and I always acted like a child. No, I don't. I see. You're already 20. If there's someone you like, you shouldn't be afraid to go after them. What are you talking about? Saying such things to your granddaughter. It's also important that he has a good personality. If his temper is bad, you shouldn't date him. Bring him to Grandma and I'll have a look. I don't have any plans yet. We'll see in maybe one or two years. Better date a few while you're still young. Is it alright to say such things to your granddaughter? But grandma wants to see you in your wedding dress. 
All right, all right, I'll try. Sooner or later, I'll introduce you to him. No need to rush. Okay. All right, I have to return to work later. You can leave the plates here after you finish. I'll clean up later. Also, don't wait for me. Just go to bed early. Okay, but you better come home earlier. Grandma won't be able to sleep if you're not here. Okay, I'll try to come home earlier. Oh, right. Tomorrow's a holiday. Shall we go to the temple to offer our prayers? Yes, we should. Hmm. Okay, then. Even Grandma's mental state had changed. She was like a child. She liked sweets, couldn't sleep when I wasn't with her, and... She became afraid of the dark. Then, another year passed. My experience and salary had grown. I met a lot of people at the office and got along well with them. Also, I had some free time to work on my own game. Grandma seemed to be fine too. It felt like everything was working out. Dina. Yes? I'm giving you a heads up. What is it? You'll have to attend the meeting later. Why? The client likes your designs. They want you as lead designer for the next project. Eh? That's all. I'll let you know when we need you. Be ready. What are you doing? Congratulations, Tina. Congratulations, Tina. That, that client is notorious for being difficult. He must really like your designs to want you specifically. Oh, thank you. It suddenly feels a bit strange. You're not used to success. Don't worry, you'll get used to it soon. It can get quite addictive. Oh, okay. True, this is a good chance. Um, I'll work hard. James. I heard about it. Congratulations, Tina. Thank you. Not bad for the strongest newcomer. You got a huge project quickly. What do you mean, the strongest newcomer? I've been here for two years. I uh, don't know. We weren't close back then, huh? We began calling you that around the time you finished your probationary period. You were... You were the best newcomer ever hired. You got your own project and you just graduated. So that's what you guys call me back then. That's still your nickname. Hey, stop calling me that. It's embarrassing. What kind of punishment is this? <laughs> Better get used to it. All right, Mrs. Strongest Newcomer. Do you have time tonight? What is it? 
that, uh, that is, I found a really nice restaurant. Do you want to go and have dinner together? I'm sorry. I don't think I can make it. Oh, didn't I already tell you? Tina has to go home and prepare dinner for her family. Oh, ah. I'm so sorry. I see. Well, maybe next time. Mm, maybe next time? Sorry, I can't make it. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. All right. Time to work. I'll see you later. Mm, see you later. Not interested? Was it your idea? He's a nice guy. Quite handsome, too. Big sister approves. No wonder he's been acting strangely for the past few days. Does it trouble you? Not really, it's just... I feel bad rejecting him. Oh, you're too nice. Also, I don't have such plans yet. I don't really have the time. Besides, I'm not sure about handsome guys. Oh, I understand. You don't feel secure around them? Don't let your guard down. Time flies and soon you'll be 30. And you'll really be in trouble. Not long after, the manager recommended me to lead the project. After 10 days, the client was also very satisfied with the demo I sent over. Everything was going so smoothly. I thought these times would continue until the end of the project. However, the day came without warning. Weird. Is Grandma still sleeping? It was 6.30 p.m. I bought dinner on the way back, but it was dark in the living room. Normally, Grandma would be sitting here, waiting for me. It wasn't just the living room. Even the kitchen the co and corridors were totally dark. Grandma? I raised my voice a little bit, but didn't get a response. I felt the uneasiness quickly entering. I never encountered such a situation. While it may not have been such a big deal because I was used to seeing Grandma every time I opened the door, this was an ordinary. I placed my bag and dinner on the table and flipped the switches. The table still had leftovers from lunch. Not much was eaten. Grandma, I'm home! I tried to speak up a little more loudly, but still didn't get a response. I walked cautiously in case Grandma was asleep. Or maybe I just wanted to be alert for any sounds. Finally, I walked into the bedroom that Grandma and I share. What I saw in front of me made my heart freeze. Grandma was sitting on the floor, lying against the bed.
She was asleep when I found her. She fell but couldn't get up, so she fell asleep on the floor. I insisted on taking her to the hospital for a checkup, even though Grandma protested. I already said it's not necessary. We've already requested urgent care. Don't think too much. If there's really nothing wrong, we can return very soon. I don't like hospitals. <laughs> Nobody likes them. Oh, right. Are you hungry? I haven't had dinner yet, and you didn't eat much at noon. I'm fine. You should go and eat. Aren't you hungry? I'm not that hungry. Do you want some fruit? Oranges or apples? Mm -hmm. I'll go buy some. While walking out from the hospital, I kept looking back at Grandma, lying on the bed. She had been staring at the ceiling since I left her side. She just kept gazing up. I couldn't hold back my curiosity. What was Grandma thinking? Even if I asked her directly, she'd probably say that she wasn't thinking about anything in particular. Not long after, the doctor returned with the test results. There weren't any major physical problems. Her mind was clear too. Grandma was able to answer the doctor's questions clearly. She might not have been able to stand up by herself because she didn't have the strength. As a precaution, we had Grandma stay at the hospital overnight. After hearing the doctor's diagnosis, I was able to relax a little. I was more concerned about how to calm down Grandma. However, it didn't last long. At 3 a.m., Grandma suddenly experienced violent stomach pains. The doctors immediately treated her, but it didn't ele elevate her pain. Not long after, they used more sophisticated medical devices to inspect her, and it was a... Uh, Tumor. It was an unfamiliar word. I never had to say such word in my life. At that moment, though, it was right there. James. What's your uh, relation to her? I'm her granddaughter. Are your parents busy? Does your grandmother have other children? Um, yes. Can you please help us to contact them? I can see that she has a tumor in her upper left abdomen, about six inches wide. She needs to stay at the hospital for further examination. Also, you might need to prepare for the worst. This 
This is all so sudden. Why is this happening? We will need to examine more, but this tumor has probably been present for a long time. I understand. Hmm. The nurse will give you a patient itinerary. She'll explain the details to you. Okay. After leaving the diagnosis room, I immediately approached Grandma. She was lying on a bed in the corridor. The nurse nodded at me and returned to the diagnosis room. How was it? How should I tell Grandma? I didn't have much time to think of what to say. Um, mm, it's fine. Does it still hurt? Okay. Do you, you want to eat anything? Not hungry. I feel full. Is that so? If you can, you should eat a bit more. Otherwise, you won't have the energy. I'll go and buy something. Also, I'll take the day off from work. Get some rest. I looked at the contact list on my phone. I found the contact from my uncle and aunt. I remember when they had that huge argument with Grandma. After that, they would only come over and visit during the Chinese New Year. That's why I didn't have a good impression of them. They were almost strangers to me. However, I also knew. Grandma was really happy to see them. Whenever they came over, she would always ask about them. I hesitated many times whether to call them. But I knew... I lost my dad, and Grandma lost her son. How can a mother not be sad about that? That's why I had to tell them. Finally, I found the courage to call them. The last time I saw them was at Chinese New Year. That was about six months ago. My impression of them haven't changed at all. He was in his gentleman's suit full of dignity and prestige, while she was elegantly dressed. Fear, that's what I felt whenever I saw them. Frank. How is she? As I said, she needs to stay at the hospital for further examination. Hmm, I understand. Buddy. How did she suddenly have a tumor? It's so strange. Didn't she have any symptoms? Didn't she have regular checkups? There's no point in saying things like that. Where's Grandma? Mm, she's in the corridor. 
Hmm. Let's go. Wait. I have Grandma's health insurance card. Also, here are some fruits that she likes. Grandma hasn't eaten much since before yesterday. I'll go home and get some of her clothes. Please take care of the admission procedures. Alright. Also, I haven't told Grandma about the tumor. Alright, I understand. Been here the whole time? Where's Aunt? She left earlier. If you didn't see her, she might have left through another door. Graduated? Hmm? Already working? Yes. I see. Did you receive the SMS with the room number? Yes. Then take those clothes over to her. If you need a home nurse, let me know. I'll take care of the payments. Also, I told Grandma about her tumor. Huh? Why? She's a smart person. She'd have figured it out. It's better that she know earlier. But nothing's been confirmed yet, right? I wouldn't be too optimistic. Grandma's at that age already. It's, it's to be expected. You should be prepared. That's all. If there's nothing else, I'll go. Let me know if anything happens. Okay. Grandma was asleep and I entered the room. She was lying on the hospital bed, softly snoring. Her right hand was injected with a tube connected to an infusion bag. The labels indicated it was nutrition. The, f the fruits I bought this morning were still on the table. They were barely touched. There were some bento boxes and noodles too. That was the day Grandma was hospitalized. Everything's going to be alright. It'll be alright. I can only pray that Grandma will be fine. Why did this suddenly happen? It shouldn't have been like this. No, the symptoms were already there. I just ignored them. Whenever I saw the clinical report indicating that Grandma's condition was good, I felt satisfied. Now she's in the hospital because of my stupidity.
Um, how are you feeling? Just went to sleep. I feel very tired. I brought some honey cake. You want some? I'm not that hungry. If so, let me know when you feel hungry. That was a tumor. Well, we'll have to perform some further examinations later. Relax, don't think too much. I know. Thank you for coming. What are you talking about? I'm your daughter. <laughs> Thought you forgot about me. How could we? We're just busy with work. Everything all right? Everything's fine, don't worry. Oh. That's good. Grandma glanced at Aunt and then looked at me. She smiled when she said, That's good. I didn't know what my grandma was thinking at that moment. I didn't dare to guess. Why was she making such a gentle expression? My heart began to ache. The tears were threatening to spill. I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, what was the thing before? You did that one already. Okay. okay. So that Grandma wouldn't see me cry, I let go of her hand and hurried from the room. Perhaps the best I could do was to let them have some time to themselves. Aunt? Long after I left, Aunt followed me out. Grandma keeps asking when you'll be back. Seems that she can't remain calm if you're not beside her. You've been staying at the hospital the past few days? Mm-hmm. Aren't you gonna hire a home nurse? I thought Uncle said he'll take care of the payment. Mm. Is it a problem? Uncle told me you're working already. Doesn't matter, I can handle it. I can take half a day off when I need to. Oh. Do you know when the examination will begin? They only told, told us to wait a little longer. Compared to Uncle, it was more difficult speaking to Aunt. It's very difficult. Also, I had this feeling that she didn't like me. This was the first time I talked to them alone. They're relatives, but to me, they're more like strangers. Not bad. Got a job quickly. Is everything going well? Mm, it's alright. How much is your salary? Not much. At least I can pay the bills. 
Do you have student loan? No. No? You should thank Grandma for that. Mm, I know. After the accident, we wanted you and Grandma to live with us. But she rejected our proposal. If we'd been able to do so, this wouldn't have happened. Let me again. Excuse me, are you the patient's family? Yes, I'm her daughter. This is today's itinerary. Let's begin. Alright, sorry for troubling you. Then... Late stage cancer. This was the result. It's late stage cancer. She probably only has six months. I think that's the doctor. James. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just guessed my blue text. <laughs> she has around a hundred tumors, all in different sizes. If you want her to be treated, it'll be really difficult, given her condition. The doctor continued with more details. However, my mind only focused on those three words. I cannot think about anything else. What was this? It felt so surreal. Such an extraordinary sense of calmness. The more I wanted to understand what the doctor was saying, the more I found myself losing control of my body. How did I look? I really didn't know. What did the doctor just say? I really didn't know. What was I doing back then? I really didn't know. The only thing I knew was... Late stage cancer. Although that term seemed so disconnected from reality, without a doubt, it was there. It would follow you everywhere, and you can't make it go away. Grandma's condition continued to deteriorate. Her hands were covered with tubes and more of her hair turned gray. Her body was only able to function normally through medical injections and nutrition sacks. She couldn't eat anything and always felt sleepy. I kept wondering. When did this all begin? Did it begin on that day or before? When did Grandma's symptoms first appear? Her pale hands had shrunken, now smaller than mine. They were all wrinkled. What's wrong? I wasn't aware that Grandma had woken up. I hoped she didn't see the sadness on my face. It had been two days since we learned about her cancer.
However, I still hadn't told her. I was just thinking about some work-related stuff. I see. Grandma's alright. You should go to work. Today's Sunday. I don't need to work. Forget about the date. Tell Grandma, how am I? As long as you eat well and regain some energy, you should be able to leave the hospital. Grandma just doesn't have enough nutrients. You need to eat more. Do you want anything? Tofu, pudding, congee, or some fruit? Then, Grandma wants some tofu pudding. I want it to be sweeter. Okay, okay, I'll go buy some now. I need to eat so I can regain energy. Grandma wants to go home. After that day, Grandma would always try to eat. Even if she would just throw up, she'd still try to eat a little. Seeing Grandma like that, I felt even more guilty. Grandma firmly believed every word I said. She truly believed that if she ate and gained her energy, she could go home. kept forcing herself to eat. By doing so, she seemed to regain some strength. However, it wasn't enough for her to undergo treatment. All the hospital could do was to keep Grandma's body functioning and alleviate her pain. You really want to do that? Yes. I understood Uncle's hesitation. However, that was what Grandma wanted. I I don't think things will get easier if they if she's discharged. That's not why I'm doing this. Grandma wants to go home. She had been asking me every day. First it was, I want to go home. Then it became, when can we go home? Grandma kept believing that I would give her an answer. What did the doctor say? He gave his permission. Hmm. I have to make this clear. I'm very busy with work. I may not have time to help you. Are you sure you want to do this? 
I will take care of her. All right. I'll help you with the discharge procedures. I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing. I only wanted to fulfill my grandma's wish. I only wanted to satisfy her desires. Call me if anything happens. Mm hmm Thank you. It was bright, sunny afternoon. I pushed my grandma, who was on a wheelchair, out towards the open. Grandma didn't say anything when she was finally able to see the blue sky. She only gazed quietly at the sky. As I looked at Grandma, I felt unsure about my decision. My hands kept shaking. Are we going home? Mm hmm. Uncle is bringing the car over, and then we can go home. Thank you. It didn't ma matter whether the decision was right. That moment would forever be engraved in my heart. It was a scene I never forget. After Grandma was discharged, I quit my job so I could look after her. My manager and colleagues didn't understand my decision. Because I quit, the project suffered a massive setback. I understood their worries and felt lots of regret. However, I also understood that there was something that only I could do. Nobody else, not a home nurse, whom we never met could do this. Only I can do it, as I knew Grandma the best. Mm, the temperature is just about right. I poured some of the corn porridge into a small bowl. It was Grandma's favorite. However, with their appetite, you probably wouldn't be able to have side dishes. That's why I grinded some vegetables and sprinkled them on the porridge. It would be meaningless if Grandma still couldn't eat properly. Grandma was still asleep in bed, making a faint snoring sound. Although I didn't want to, I lightly shook her. Grandma, it's time to eat. After calling out to her, I helped her walk to the table. She had a very little appetite. That's why I had to give her more frequent meals with smaller portions. She didn't have the strength to get up by herself. She lost the ability to walk on her own. I fed the porch to her by the spoonful. So that Grandma wouldn't choke. I gave her really small portions. The TV had her favorite show on. But she only kept staring at a blank wall. 
Even when I asked her questions, she would only nod or shake her head. That was how the days passed. She didn't show any signs of getting better. It was only a while ago that I was praying that if I took good care of her, she can walk properly or chat happily. After only a month, I didn't have high hopes. All I wished was that Grandma would finish her meal. I can't eat anymore. She didn't finish this time. The portion wasn't even enough to feed a small child. Do you want to watch TV? Grandma shook her head. Do you want to lie down? She nodded. I put the bowl away, carefully guided her with my hands as she slowly leaned back. I covered her with a blanket and lightly patted it. Grandma fell asleep soon after. All right. Was there anything else I needed to do? My mind went over all the things I did. It seems that I finished everything. It was only after doing it myself that I realized that Grandma must have done this every day. She greeted me in the sparkling, clean living room. I recall the cooked meals and clean clothes neatly put away in the drawers. Grandma had done this. That's why it's normal for me to do this now. Even if I feel tired, it cannot be an excuse. I decided not to think too much about it. It was time to prepare Grandma's bath. At 4 a.m., I was woken up again. Grandma would suddenly wake up in the middle of the night, calling out my name. All I had to do was hold her hands, and Grandma would quiet down and go back to sleep. Her condition got worse. Compared to when she was at the hospital, it was even worse. As time passed, her eyes lost their luster, and she couldn't answer my questions properly. Sometimes, she couldn't even chew. It seemed like I'd made a wrong decision. I shouldn't have taken her home. I was wrong. Who could help me? Could anyone tell me what I should do? Could anyone come and blame me? Tell me what I did wrong? What should I do? Eventually, I prayed for help from the gods. I even wished for a contract with the devil.
I do whatever it takes, no matter the cost. No matter how much I cried for help, I could only see darkness, no path to light my way. Everything was wrong, wrong and wrong. Please, who could help me? Bring a bit of light. Then the light entered. It blinded my vision, making me unable to open my eyes. It's morning already? I looked at the clock, indicating that it's 6.30 a.m. This was usually the time that Grandma would wake up. Right, I need to prepare breakfast. Yesterday, she had porridge. The day before, she had some iced fruit. Today, I'll prepare some sweets. Grandma's face was pale. Her skin was also turning a bit yellow. Her symptoms were getting worse. It was totally out of control. She wasn't able to eat. How could eating make Grandma any better? I remember how my heart was crying the night before. I couldn't let things stay like this. I picked up the phone and called Uncle and Aunt. I couldn't hesitate. There was only one thing I could do. Frank? You want to send Grandma back to the hospital? I'm sorry. I don't think that this can continue. Have you slept? You don't look well. I told you, she shouldn't have left the hospital. She should have stayed at the hospice. Someone would have cared for her too. You wouldn't have ended up like this. You even lost your job. I'm sorry. Is this your final decision? Mm. I understand. Can you go and get her things? I have a few doctor friends in Taipei. I suggest we take her there. The hospitals here probably won't be any good. Let's send her to Taipei. Okay. However, even the doctors in Tepe couldn't do anything. Grandma couldn't undergo treatment in her condition. She was soon transferred to a hospice. At least, she received better care. 
I, I, I'm sorry. Of course, Grandma couldn't hear my apology. Because of my mistake, she had to suffer. I could only feel unending regret. I wish I could turn back time. I looked at the do not resuscitate agreement on the table, and I could only accept the reality. Because of my mistake, I couldn't rewind time and change things. I am so sorry. I held back my tears as I promised I wouldn't cry in front of Grandma. I couldn't allow her to see my weak side. The air smells of antiseptics. Although the midday sun is up, the place is still isolated and quiet. This is where I work, a place where the living meets death. It's 1 p.m. Time for the routine checkups. I push the trolley in front of her room and stop. It's always polite to knock first before entering. However, only for this room would I add another gesture. That's because of the caregiver in this room. The patient is an old lady around 70 years old, a late stage cancer patient. I don't think this is me. Wait. Yeah, I don't think this is me at all. I'll just do it. Okay. The patient's an old lady, around 70 years old, a late stage cancer patient. The caretaker is a girl, about 20 years old. Holly opened the door just a bit, just so I could see. She tried to listen and could hear the girl murmuring. Sometimes she would ask her simple questions. Sometimes she would narrate happy stories. Sometimes she would recall times when she used to work. Sometimes, she would talk about her game of design ideas. Sometimes, she would talk about her late parents. Around this time, she would always talk to her grandma. And though there's never any response, she would keep talking about different topics. After the conversation dies down, would knock and enter. Hi, I'm here to take blood pressure readings. Sorry for troubling you. She looks really exhausted. They've been here for five days. The records indicate that the patient was from another hospital. After her condition was stabilized, she and the girl went home. However, her condition got worse. She ended up in the hospital again. From her expression, it doesn't appear that her exhaustion is because of the past few days. Did Grandma wake up in the morning? Yes, but only for a short while. Did she eat? A little. Hmm. Her voice doesn't have much energy. A normal person wouldn't sound like that. Are you taking care of her all by yourself? I remember there were other people, your uncle and aunt. 
Don't they help? They're very busy. Is something wrong? No, nothing. Thank you. I'm fine. I got some rest. She has a very sharp sense. However, she doesn't look fine at all. I can tell her grandma is a very important person to her. She's been staying by her side day and night. Perhaps she still holds on to that bit of hope. However, experience tells me that it's difficult. I have witnessed many deaths, such an act of pure love still aches my heart. The blood pressure is normal. Thank you. Did Grandma feel any pain? No. Okay. Although I wanted to question further, I think that would be inappropriate. I'm not supposed to invest emotionally in a patient or relatives. It only caused me anguish. Then... That's all. Thank you. Okay. She might have noticed the subtle changes in my expression. I have a feeling what she wanted to ask. As a medical professional, though, I couldn't give her false hopes. I could only repeat the facts to her. She might realize and decide not to ask. However, I would suddenly pray for them. Please, let me suddenly offer my blessings to them. Christina, just, just go on. I'm not sure who, who this is. Okay. Terrible. Grandma now required a ventilator. There were tubes in her nostrils, too. She didn't look like the grandma I used to know. I owe the nurse so much. She brought a blanket to make sure that Grandma didn't catch a cold. When she noticed my pale face, she even offered me some chocolate. However, her usual smile was absent today, replaced with a solemn expression. step out, Frank. Please, prepare yourself. You might only have a week to live. Beside the nurse was the doctor who broke the news. I wasn't surprised. Actually, I thought it was time. I understand. I'll let the others know. Mm, bless you. I collapsed into the chair after they left. The time had finally come. Maybe if I could accept it, then I could let it all go. I felt so calm. Surreal. A tiny glimmer of hope had all but vanished. I leaned back and stared at the empty ceiling.
It wasn't long ago that we were laughing and chatting. Only half a year ago, we were out shopping together. At the start of the year, we said that we'd go on vacation overseas. The time I spent with my grandma all flashed by like a film reel. Now all those hopes vanished. How unrealistic were they? I thought I'd cry out loud and try to escape. Once again, I looked at my grandma. Right, I still haven't talked to her. What should I tell her today? It seemed that I already told her everything. I even told her my ideal type. Things that I used to conceal, I've revealed to her. I told her the ending to her favorite drama. What else can I tell her? There's one thing I haven't told her. I've kept it inside me since my childhood days. I really wanted to say that I was too embarrassed. Sometimes I regret why did I didn't say it before. But I needed to say and tell her what I really thought. I love you. I'm already expecting not to receive an answer. Did Grandma hear me? I was curious to see Grandma's reaction if she heard me. However, she doesn't respond or open her eyes, as though pretending not to have heard me. I could only pretend to be a spoiled child and lie down next to her. I filled with her fingers. scratching a bit, trying to get her attention. Then, I thought of something. Just once more, I wanted her to call out my name. Finally, I closed my eyes and started to dream. Someone was patting my head. Who was it? Oh, is it examination time already? But nobody comes in the morning. This wasn't the usual way to wake someone up. felt so familiar and gentle. It was so comfortably addictive, I just wanted those hands to keep touching me. I 
could it be? Grandma? The unimaginable was right in front of me. Grandma was touching my face, even with those tubes in her hands. The grandma, who had lost consciousness, woke up. She had been unconscious for so long, but was now awake. Did I wake you up? Oh, no! She spoke. It had been a while since I last heard Grandma's voice. Once I realized it wasn't a dream, I immediately got up. G Grandma! Grandma lightly nodded her head. Any bewilderment I felt was replaced by happiness. Can you help me sit up? Her voice was very weak. But she was awake. And she was speaking. I adjusted the bed so Grandma could sit up a bit. Is this good enough? Hmm. Do you know where you are? Of course I know. I'm at the hospital. Do you know who I am? Silly. How could I forget? You're my precious granddaughter. It's true. She was back. I felt so happy. Grandma is feeling a bit hungry. Do you have tofu pudding? D tofu pudding? I looked at the clock on the wall, which indicated that it was 1 a.m. It was after midnight, and of course, nothing could be bought. The hospital doors were closed too. What should I do? Tofu pudding. Where could I get a hold of it? It doesn't matter if you can't find it. But... That's when I remembered that there were some sweets in the fridge. You want some pudding? Yes. Not only was she able to talk to me, she was in a good state of mind. She had an appetite. Immediately, I opened the fridge and got the pudding. Be careful. Eat slowly. One spoonful at a time, I fed a small portion of pudding to Grandma. I felt so happy to see Grandma eating. I could feel my heart leaping. Can I turn on the TV? Of course! I turned on the TV and put on Grandma's favorite chip. 
It was repeating an old show. Is this channel all right? Good. Grandma ate her pudding while she watched TV. Her eyes had more life. If she remained like this, perhaps we could remove her tubes tomorrow. Work hard. I must work hard too. She finished the pudding. All of it. Do you want anything else? There's some iced fruit. I'm full. Mm. She's been awake for half an hour. There doesn't seem to be any abnormalities. I couldn't help but smile. Seeing Grandma like that. Why are you smiling? Nothing. Come here, you. Grandma raised her right hand. Naturally, I tucked my head over to the bedside. Grim Grandma slowly lowered her hands while I let her brush and pat me like a spoiled child. My fatigue was gone instantly. Maybe this was what I'd been wanting. That peaceful, nostalgic moment from yesterday. So... Hmm? A long, playful dream. It was a place painted in white. I kept walking until I reached a yellow field of grass. It was so beautiful. More so than the wheat fields I saw when I was a child. On the grassland were many different animals. Like birds in different shades and colors. With two legs, penguins flying in the air. This is. And you remember? You gave this drawing to your mom. On the road were all these strange animals. How could you see those cute animals were strange? <laughs> I'm sorry. They were strange, but cute. That's right. Then Grim kept walking. The sun was bright, but it wasn't hot. As I climbed higher and was about to reach the top, I saw someone standing there. Can you guess who it was? I feel tired. My eyelids are getting heavier. Why do I feel so sleepy? I don't know. Was it me?
true. You were only three years old back then. In only a few minutes, I couldn't count how many times my eyelids closed, forcing me to open them again. Grandma never stopped brushing my hair. I wanted to tell her not to say such things, but I didn't know how, as my mind was all foggy and tired. Your first word was Grandpa. Was it? Yes, your father was really jealous. Then Grandma kept walking. Grandpa's face was getting clearer, and he was waving at me. No, I didn't want to hear that. But... I was so sleepy. As I walked closer, it was only a few steps until I could touch him. I could hear a voice from behind. As I turned around, both cute animals were looking at me. They were speaking in soft voices. I listened carefully, and you know what I heard? Grandma. Simple word. Oh, that's when I remember that it isn't time yet. Grandma. My sweet. It was that voice, so gentle and cute and a little bit spoiled. What a relief. I turned to look at the top of the hill. Grandpa wasn't there. The path had vanished too. I returned to that place full of light. Then I woke up. That's great. Grandma seemed to have heard me call for her and came back. It was a relief she didn't go to Grandpa. My prayers were answered. What a relief. What a relief. Once I felt relieved and let down my guard. Do you want to sleep? It's not time to sleep yet. Mm. Once again, I opened my eyes and looked at Grandma. Grandma's face didn't look all that different from before. She had a kind, gentle smile on her face. Sorry, but Grandma said a couple more things. Alright. When we got home, Grandma wanted to pass something on to you. At the time, though, I didn't know what I was doing anymore. I don't have many memories of that time. The one thing Grandma knows, though, is that my granddaughter was taking care of me. That was nothing. Oh, thank you. You're such a sweet child. A beautiful girl like you will find a good husband. Remember what I'm about to tell you. In Dad's room, under the middle bookshelf, there's a hole. Dad accidentally made it and Grandma filled it up. When we go 
at home. Remember to open that hole. Got some items wrapped in cloths. Take it out. You must find it once you get home. My granddaughter, did you hear that? Yes. Don't let anyone take it. It's yours. Mm. All right. Go to bed. You've worked hard. Good night. She's asleep. She must be so tired. I'm very sorry. That's still me. Christina? Oh, okay. No way, that's probably, um, the grandma, right? Because. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I wanted to cover her with a blanket, but couldn't do it. My strength was slowly leaving. My sweet granddaughter, cover yourself with a blanket first or you'll catch a cold. She didn't hear me. The TV was still on. The remote was too far away and I couldn't get it. I could only move my palms. I could only keep brushing her hair. Even the simple action was slowly draining me. Is it time? Although I'm happy I was able to see and speak to her one last time. My dad and mom aren't here anymore. If I'm not here, what will happen to her? She'll be all alone. Is that alright? Looks like I still couldn't let her go without seeing her in a wedding dress. I fear I won't have that chance. But I really want to see. Oh, my vision is getting blurry. The darkness is terrifying. I cannot see. I really, really want to see your sleepy face again. That cute, tender face. I can't. My body doesn't feel like mine anymore. something I must say. I must say it. I feel like my lips can move. But can I say it? I must try. I love you too. Miss? Miss, please wake up. Miss? I opened my eyes. Blinding light greeted me. I couldn't remember how I fell asleep. When I woke up, it was already morning. I thought it was time for the usual examination, however, something was different. In addition to the nurse, a few doctors and other nurses were present. They all gave me the solemn look. I could feel a chill engulfing my body. Is something wrong? Your grandma just passed away. Huh? Ten minutes ago. How can this be? I looked towards Grandma, only to find her lying motionless on the bed. Grandma's hands were hanging limply. There was no reaction. Then I looked at the table. There was an empty pudding container. 
I turned my head towards the TV, broadcasting the morning news. Then I turned back to the doctors. They all looked at me with serious faces. This was truly real, not a joke. Huh? This... I didn't know how to react. What should I do? I couldn't respond, or think. Do you want to contact your relatives? Oh. Right. Contact my relatives. I'll call them. Not long after, uncle and aunt arrived. Immediately, they went over to see grandma for the last time and took care of the documents. I just kept sitting on the floor near the bed. I couldn't organize my thoughts. I even thought that last night was just a dream. No. It couldn't have been a dream. It was so real and warm. I definitely felt the warmth from Grandma. And why, if it was real, would it end like this? Uncle and Aunt appeared in front of me. Their expressions hasn't changed. How could they stay so calm? I couldn't understand them. How could they? It's been tough for you. I didn't want to hear that. We took care of the documents. You should go home. Grandma will be moved there too. We'll have the ceremony at home. That wasn't important. It's over. Mom will no longer suffer. What did she just say? They're acting as if it's none of their concern. How? How can you act as if it's nothing? Nothing. What are you talking about? How can you not be feeling anything after Grandma left us? What are you talking about? Am I not right? Not only now, even at the other hospital. You two only came when she was admitted and discharged from the hospital. Why didn't you spend more time with Grandma? Hey, this is a hospital. Can you lower your voice? Also, I told you I'm very busy. Even if you're busy, is it really that difficult to find some time to visit Grandma? You have no idea how much Grandma missed you both. You're way out of line. Wait. I understand. You took care of Grandma all by yourself for the past few months. You must be feeling tired, physically and mentally, so I won't reprimand you. But I already said, you could have hired a home nurse. I did say I'd pay for one, so you didn't have to worry. 
It's not like I don't understand Grandma. She could be really stubborn. She might not have accepted a stranger looking after her. At least, though, someone would have been there. It would have been better than this. You're physically and mentally drained. Not to mention, you have no job. Everyone has their time. Grandma was old. It's normal. Having said that, your contribution can't be understated. So please, calm down. It's not about money or her age. Don't care about such trivial things. I only want to know what is grandma to you? How can you act like it's nothing? Even in the past, both of you would only visit her during Chinese New Year. You'd only see her once a year, only once. Looks like you have the wrong impression of us. It's not that we ignored Grandma, she rejected us. It suggested to her a long time ago that she and you should live with us. But Grandma refused, do you know why? Because of you. To put it more kindly, she didn't want to bother us. Truthfully though, she just didn't want us to get a hold of your dad's inheritance. Good for you. You have money from both your dad and grandma. You don't need to worry about starving or having enough clothes to keep yourself warm. You can get everything you want. You'll live a good life from now on. You have nothing to worry about anymore. Since that's the case, why shouldn't we expect you to put more effort than us? Hey. Alright, alright. It's not like that. I'm not bitter about that. Yeah. Enough. Enough! It's, it's all over anyway. Nothing matters anymore. That's the end, I think. She ran away. You were too harsh just then. It's just the truth. It's a burden to take care of an elderly adult and child. It costs money, no? I, if I didn't ask about brother's inheritance first, I wouldn't have been able to afford it. Doesn't matter. Let's go. What about her? Give her some space. She's not a child anymore. She'll come back eventually. True. 